From Washington, this is VOA News. A passenger jet crashes on landing in the United States. A deadly train derailment in Canada and in Egypt. The question of who will lead next. I'm Marty Johnson reporting from Washington. An Asiana jet carrying more than 300 passengers and crew members crash landed at the San Francisco airport Saturday, killing at least two people and injuring more than 180. The flight originated in Shanghai, China, and stopped in the South Korean capital of Seoul before heading to San Francisco in the western state of, of California. Most of the people on board the Boeing 777 were Chinese, South Korean, and U.S. nationals. San Francisco Mayor, Mayor Edwin Lee. I want to make sure you understand the uh, uh, breakdown by nationality of the passengers uh, on Asiana Flight 214. There were 77 Koreans, uh, 141 Chinese descent, 61 U.S. citizens, one Japanese American, and about 11 others. Uh, of different ethnicities. That accounts for 291 passengers. The South Korean airline says the two dead were Chinese passengers seated at the back of the plane, reportedly teenage girls. Witnesses say the plane's tail appeared to hit the runway first as it came in for a landing. It then broke off. The aircraft caught fire and, according to witnesses, bounced violently before coming to rest on the tarmac. Teams of investigators, including the head of the NTSB, are en route to San Francisco to investigate the accident. Many people remain missing in Canada's Quebec province one day after a train carrying crude oil hurtled off the track and exploded in the center of the town, killing at least one person. The accident in the lakeside town of Lac Megantic occurred in the wee hours of Saturday morning when the town center was crowded with weekend partygoers. The derailment caused four of the train's 70 cars to explode in the middle of town, sending a gigantic fireball into the sky, destroying dozens of buildings, including stores and at least one bar, and continuing to burn for hours. Canada's Prime Minister Stephen Harper expressed his feelings after the accident. What has happened is shocking and truly devastating. My thoughts and prayers, and those of all Canadians, are with the people of Lac Megantic as they deal with this disaster in their community. Tragically, uh, it is clear there has been loss of life, but we still do not know how extensive that is. I offer my heartfelt condolences to all of the families and friends of the victims. Uh, officials again have confirmed one fatality, but media reports indicate some 80 people are still missing. The accident forced about 2,000 people to evacuate their homes. That's a third of Lac Megantic's 6,000 residents. It's expected to be another day of protests in Egypt's capital city as supporters and opponents of deposed Egyptian President Mohamed Morsi plan more demonstrations in Cairo just two days after violent clashes between the two groups left more than 30 dead. Egypt's military detained Mr. Morsi, the nation's first democratically elected president, and arrested other leaders of the Egyptian Muslim Brotherhood on Wednesday, saying the, the actions were needed to prevent a mass uprising by Mr. Morsi's opponents, who accused him of betraying the 2011 revolution that toppled Hosni Mubarak and his 30-year rule. The group known as Rebel, which has been organizing anti-Morsi protesters in Tiber Square, plans a large demonstration today to protest what uh, to celebrate what protesters called the Second Revolution. At the same time, Egypt's new interim president appears to be backing away from an announcement that pro-reform leader Mohamed El Baradé would be made the interim prime minister. A spokesman for President Adli Mansour denied the appointment of the Nobel laureate. And Muslim Brotherhood supporters um, say they will continue their protests until Mohamed Morsi is reinstated.
Radical Islamic cleric Abu Qatada was deported from Britain to Jordan early today, ending a decade-long battle to send him back to Jordan to face terrorism charges. The move comes after Britain and Jordan ratified a treaty on torture aimed at easing human rights concerns that blocked previous attempts to deport the Jordanian uh, preacher. Bolivian President Evo Morales says he will grant asylum to former U.S. intelligence contractor Edward Snowden if requested. Quiero decirles, hermanas y hermanos, de ese pueblo originario, Mr. Morales on Saturday became the third Latin American leader to offer asylum to Snowden, which is fortunate because Russia says they prefer that he leave their country. So far, he's been able and unable to do so. I'm Marty Johnson, VOA News in Washington.